Hello and welcome to this iMesh Asset Manager update video and you're not dreaming, this is actually happening. We have finally made an update and there was no more putting it off because it got to Blender 2.9 which completely broke it and you couldn't import anything so we, we decided to really get in deep and make this work. We kind of put it off just because of iMesh exclusive which we just concentrated all of our time on making assets and now we are kind of in a good place to push this quite hard. We've actually got quite a lot of updates um, in the back end kind of planned which we're going to be bringing out over the coming months so I would recommend to download it and it's completely for free and you'll be able to get the updates as they come because we have an update auto update feature which you can then just keep checking if there are new versions available and you can update it from there. If you've already installed it then that still works you can then get the new version straight away. If you don't know how to install an add-on I would recommend just quickly googling it and installing it because we've got the zip file in the description and I'm not going to go over that in this video so you just basically install the .zip file. Okay I see my camera going a little bit funky there so just ignore me if I look like a robot and this is going to be now the most important part of the video if you're going to listen to anything because this is the most confusing feature which is also something which we're going to be fixing a little bit later um, and that is the asset directory and how you save your assets to make sure that they show up correctly because this is um, this is the most important part. So this is, these are my assets here. So if I go here, you want to choose where all of your assets are saved in the main category. So this is the main category here and this, these here, and that is how they show up. So we have architectural, bathroom, bedroom, clothing, blah, blah, blah. So these are all these main categories. Then in each of these categories, there is a subcategory. So let's go to subcategory and then they're all here. So Oops, I'm in the wrong one. Architectural, and then here are these cornice, decoration, doors, radiators. Right, there we go. So that is important. The next thing is that each asset is in its own folder. So that is the most important part. So if I want to have a look at this asset, there are there is the dot blend file plus the thumbnail. And then what that does, if I go to here and go to switches, so what it's already done, if we'll pretend that this is the same one, what it does is it links the blend file to whatever thumbnail you have in the, in that folder. So that is how it links it and it allows you to keep all your textures together and everything for that asset just needs to be in its own folder inside the subfolder. If you ended up having a another folder and you plumped everything in there, then that's too deep. That's too many folders down. So that is no longer going to work. So let's just undo this. So you just need to make sure you have main category, subcategory, and then your asset folder. And that is probably the most important part. Um, we are gonna make that easier because we understand that that is not how everyone likes to keep their assets. Like for example, some people like to have maybe um, architecture, they might have then bolts, if I make a folder, called bolts. And then they just have all the types of blend files for all of their bolts in there. And they don't wanna put each one in its own folder. So we're going to make that happen. We're going to make that probably in the next update. And we will allow you to then choose the thumbnails to then be associated with that .blend file. Okay, so that is that. Okay, and the next thing is that if you don't have already a folder structure and you want to do architectural visualization, then all you need to do is choose your folder that you want and then you click make and then it will auto create all of these folders for you. So that'll be a lot easier. Okay, you will see that in some of our folders we'll have a Corona version and a Cycles version. That is because we used to love Corona render for Blender, but the development for that stopped, I don't know, almost one and a half years ago and it, in Blender 2.79. So we kind of stopped making our assets work with Corona as well because that just took so much time and we could just concentrate our time on making um, assets for Blender. And maybe we'll bring this back again if the development becomes official from Corona, but they seem quite reluctant. So that is no longer a feature. So what this does is basically, if we have this turned on, what you can do here is choose if you want to load in the Corona version or the Cycles version. So um, let's just go to switches, uh, append object, and then you'll see here that there are nodes which are linked to Corona, but because the development stopped, I don't have Corona installed anymore. So that is a very historic feature. Um, if you do think, if you set it to cycles, it will then of course load in just the normal cycles version. But because that is an historic feature, we have a, just a new switch here called 
enable switch and then that will just hide that completely because I think that there are very very few people who actually use our Karuna assets now which is a shame because I freaking love that renderer and maybe maybe it'll come back eventually so that is just gonna be turned off by default um, okay so let's have a look at some new features the first thing is let's add a plane let's put the cursor over here and then let's go to seating and chairs whoa it goes to the cursor so let's let's add in another one and there we go so the cursor is the object is going to be put to the cursor which is perfect we are going to update this also to allow you to then automatically snap it onto whichever surface you want but for now i think that is going to be a big help for a lot of people okay so let's go over something a little bit more complicated and that is link object and if you don't know how link objects works i can just show you here so if you go to file link and then if i go to an object i click in it and then i go to the objects and just import all of these they import as static objects and you cannot move them this is quite good for a lot of workflows if you save this in this file over here and then load this in this will then load into that specific location but for a lot of cases especially in architectural visualization you might import an object and you might want to then still move it so if i just delete that let's just delete this again and go to file link to then import everything but to still be able to move it you want to import the collections and collection is kind of the default one for blender 2. Point, i think it's blender 2.8 and blender 2.9 and that is basically the scene collection so if you load up any new file and you can see here there is already one called collection so if you save that file there's always going to be one called collection if you do not have one called collection then there are other collections you can create by creating the object and selecting all of them and pressing Control G and then that will save that as its own collection. So if we want to import just this one, this one is the scene collection, we can then move it around and scale it and everything and everything is good. But you might be thinking, oh, there are more collections in there. So if I go to file link, you might have multiple collections. So let's go to here. We have this one and we have this one. So let me show you how that will work with this asset manager. We basically just have one button. And to make that one button work with all the ways that linked assets can be used is a little bit difficult. So we need some sort of filters and we're probably gonna build on these filters as time goes on to make it a little bit easier for every use case. But for our particular use case and for a lot of use cases, we think this is gonna be the best way. So if you click link object, what this does is it looks for first the scene collection and that is that one collection that gets saved in all of these new files so if you make an asset save it there's always going to be one called collection so that is the one that it imports first but now you'll see that these ones and these ones are joined and we do know that there are more collections available in that in that file and that could be you might have a very small scene which you always import and you might have a collection for the dinner tableware you might have a collection for all the chairs and you might have a collection for I don't know the floor assets and you might want to import all of them and not just that collection so we have this button here called import all other collections if available so if we link that we have the scene collection which i guess we can delete we have this one here oh i deleted that one there we go so we have we basically have all the collections they've imported here and we can use them how we like so we might want to move the dining table where somewhere else i don't know so that is how that button works and we also have this other checkbox here which is basically if you have a collection called collection and you save that file if you then just click link let me go let me do this here so let me just if i go file link and then i link just this collection you're going to have one called collection which is not very useful because you don't know what that is you might be looking for it like oh what is the name of this file but it's not going to be there so what we've done is that if if it imports one called collection it's just going to rename it to the actual file name of that asset so that will make it a much much easier to deal with lots of things okay so if we try to import this asset now this one was made in blender 2.79 but there was no collections available in 2.79 unless we made a group but not all of our assets required any groups because it was literally just one object so if you click link what it does now is it just links that object but it's static because there's no other options for it to do but this is incredibly simple to fix if you have an asset that was made in an ancient version just click this blend file and save it and then link and now you have the um the asset as a linked collection because when you loaded this up it then loaded it up in 
and automatically gave it a scene collection. And then you can see here it's also renamed it the actual file name. So that this I think is going to be pretty helpful. I think that I personally didn't use linked assets too much I, and very infrequently. I didn't really see the need. Um, but since working with this asset manager, I'm linking far more things. The only problem comes when you want to change the materials and stuff. But if you just want to quickly build on your scene and not make your scene incredibly large, then linked assets is definitely the way to go. And I think that that is kind of all the features now. And I think I'm probably going to finish. OK, so I think that is all the features from this video. And I'd highly recommend that you download this asset manager. If you go to iMesh, actually, because you also get a bunch of freebies, which is something that you can then add into the asset manager and you can get going straight away, including some default materials and some more materials. You basically get all of these things and that should get you started. Yeah, get making. If you have any any updates, then do let us know because we do have a, a Trello page of updates to come and we'd love to know your input or if something doesn't work, then of course we will also fix that now too. So thank you very much for watching and oh, join us on Twitter. I'll also put that on the description. And okay, thank you very much.